with uh, David Borges from St Andrews at uh, the ISEC, International Statistical Ecology Conference in Montpellier. Uh, thanks for joining us, David. My pleasure. So you've got a, a paper that's recently been accepted in Methods in Ecology and Evolution, um, spatially explicit capture, I'm going to get the title wrong. It's um, uh, continuous time. Continuous capture. time. Yeah. Yeah. So could you just continuous time, spatial capture, recapture? Yeah. Right. Um, so could you just explain to us just in a, a few minutes uh, basically what it's about? Yeah, so the basic idea is that it, it was motivated by camera traps actually and uh, capture recapture historically has always had capture occasions and I think that's largely because historically you physically caught the animal released it so that defined the capture occasion. But when you move to things like camera traps that um, they just sample continuously so it struck me that really you should be building a model that reflects the kind of sampling that you're doing and in reality, you're sampling continuously with a capture with a camera trap. So it just made sense to set up the capture recapture machinery with continuous time and get rid of the capture occasion thing with the camera trap. That's a bit of an artificial imposition. Yeah, right. So are many people using camera traps? Our camera trap use is, is um, growing exponentially, really. They've, in the last few years, decade, maybe less than that, they've become really inexpensive. And so you get for very little money, you can sample large areas for large times. So, yeah, right. So, at, in fact, the camera trap um, data gathering is is outpacing the methodology. So, the methodology is trying to catch mm. the kind of data you get out of camera traps. Yeah, right. And um, you were applying it to jaguar data. So, yes. So, so, I guess the main thing it's done for is for for mammal movement. Is that right? Or? Um, yes. So, the thing that leads to detection in camera traps is the animal moving in front of in front of the trap, and it's typically you use camera traps for things that you can't, that are cryptic, that are difficult to sample. So jaguars, um, very difficult to see. I've also applied it to leopards in an area where the farmers in the area, when the leopard, the camera trap survey started, the farmer said, you're wasting your time, there are no leopards here. Right. They put the camera traps up and they, they were catching lots of leopards. <laughs> so it's these um, cryptic species that they work really well for. Yeah, right. And the capture recapture stuff works well when you can identify the individuals. But in fact, on camera traps, you, most of your data is from non-individually identifiable stuff. So that's a real growth area in terms of methodologies. How do you deal with that? And there was a talk at this conference about one way of dealing with that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so the methods you were using, it was a, it was a point process model, uh, like it was a Poisson? Yes, so a non-homogeneous Poisson process. Mm -hmm. And actually, there are two Poisson processes. There's a spatial Poisson process, which controls where the individual home, home range centres are or activity centres are. Mm. And then that, that has existed in the literature for a while, but then there's also a temporal point process, and that was the new thing. Um, right. You can look at the captured times as a point process in time. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. So, um, do you, so I've, I've done a little bit of point process stuff in species distribution modelling, mm. and we were able to use sort of a, a GLM sort of uh, type approach to fit the models. Mm. Does that sort of stuff apply here, or is it complicated by the fact that there's the multiple individuals? In there? Um, it's not the multiple individuals that complicate it here, it's that the likelihood can't be formulated simply as a GLM. So yeah. it, has a, it has a Poisson component in the front, and then it's yes. got a product of an integral. Yeah, the product of the integral. Yeah, and so yeah. that's what makes it not directly applicable. Yeah. But actually, another thing that Simon Wood spoke about, actually didn't speak about, but has just extended his MGCV package mm. to, I think, deal with that kind of likelihood. So it's yeah, right. very similar to GLM GAM type stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah good. Um, I guess another thing about it was there was an assumption of independence in there. Like yeah. So that, I think, is when you're dealing with the continuous time stuff, it's, we haven't cracked that problem, as in with continuous time, if you and I are traps and I catch a, a leopard, let's say, now, mm. that immediately means in the next instant the hazard of you catching it has dropped to zero. Mm. So you've got to have uh, capture hazards that depend on where the animal was last seen. Mm. And if you had a diffusion process, that would be moderately easy to do, but because animals have home ranges, they tend to go back to their home range centre. Yeah. And on top of that, we don't observe the home range centre. Mm. Modelling the dependence that comes about as a result of that sort of movement is quite difficult. So that's a, a methodological challenge. Yeah, right. Um, do you think that there's sort of uh, methods in other literatures that could be borrowed for that? Like, is, is, is there sort of um, other people using point process models? Like, do you think there's, there's something there for it? I'm sure there is. Some of it I'm vaguely aware of. So there's a lot of um, work being done with movement models because the other technology in this area that's grown real yeah. fast is tag technology. So pe people are getting a huge amount of information that allows them to characterise movement well. 
mm. like the GPS sort of collars and stuff. Yes, exactly that sort of thing. And there's, there was a session this morning on modeling that kind of data. Now, that data is exactly what causes capture because it's how the animal moves that causes capture. So the key to modeling the dependence in capture mm. is being able to integrate a movement model with a spatially explicit capture capture. Right. And we'd like to do that. We can think of ways of doing it, but not very elegant ways of doing it. The computation becomes real difficult. I think that's another area that's, that's um, uh, really ripe for some methodological development. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, how, so how are you finding ISEC, the conference? Oh, it's great. It's a fantastic conference. Really like it. Do you have a, a top talk, favorite talk? Um, Oh, good question. You know, I liked uh, Simon Wood's talk. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, me too. The plenary talk. I thought that was really good. Yeah, so that was like the Rika, like he was taking Rika models, these things that are near chaotic behaviour, and actually showing that if you look at it the right way, you can you can you can pull some some information out about the the parameters. Yeah, so it was yeah. things where it's very difficult to because you've got these really multimodal modal likelihoods. It's very difficult to do the sort of things that I would normally do. Yeah, and he has very clever ways of dealing with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Not at all. My pleasure.